Blog Talk Radio. And lift off, lift off on another Tower Today radio episode here on the Psychic Talk Radio Network. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dax Carlisle, a certified life coach, tarot advisor, and numerologist coming to you live from Tucson, Arizona. And joining me, as always, my fabulous co-host, live from Amarillo, Texas, certified tarot master, crystal Reiki master, and the vice president for certification for the Tarot Guild, the one, the only, Mary Brown. Hey, Mary. Hey, Dex. Hey, everybody. Happy Psychic Saturday. Happy Psychic Saturday. Here we are again. We got a full show of open lines, and you can call in for mini readings. We're going to give you the phone number and everything in just a minute. But uh, this is the last, the last tarot today for December, and on the last show, we always do the Psychic Spin. So, because we're in the holiday season, we thought, hey, why not something fun like asking the tarot about Santa and the elves? <laughs> so, yes! we're going to do it. <laughs> we're going to do it. Oh, my God. So much fun. I was reading up before the show on, you know, the Santa Claus and the various versions, and it was so much fun. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing how it has been going on for centuries and around the world and you know it, it's kind of a big big deal in a in a way that you know I think sometimes we tend to like kind of take it for granted so I'm excited that we're seeing what the tarot has to say about Santa Claus and the elves it's so funny you know like every Christmas we have our a regular you know kind of you know Christmas celebration and you know gift giving and stuff and and then uh, later on Christmas Day, we have uh, Puppy Christmas with the dogs. and oh, Puppy from... Christmas. <laughs> and all the presents say from Santa Paws. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I wonder, well, you know, if they believe. You know, <laughs> when we first came up with this idea, you know, it's like, yeah, what about those elves anyway? You know, and they're always depicted as the diminutive elves, but... Then, you know, Lord of the Rings, elves are actually, you know, like really tall, slender, beautiful creatures. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's like, wait lies, a minute. Right? Yeah. What's really going on with that? You know, actually, most of the stuff, most of the stuff that we attribute to, like the American version, you know, with the North Pole workshop and the elves and Mrs. Claus and everything, it all comes from one person, Thomas Nast, you know, yeah. who like, he was a political cartoonist in 1881. It all comes from one person. And, you know, and, and we think that this, uh, you know, there's the ori- original uh, St. Nicholas, you know, from, God, when was he born? He was born in, uh, they think around 200 280 AD. AD. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is that, you know, we think that this story the way it is now goes all the way back thousands of years. No, it doesn't. It's from 1881. But we'll get into that in a minute. First, I want to give out the phone number. People are already calling in. I hope they're going to talk about Santa and the elves too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but you can call in and ask 
you know, anything you want. You know, you could you could chat with us. Uh, it's open lines. What's on your mind? Hey, you know, we're coming up on the end of 2020. There's got to be a lot of stuff on people's minds, you know. And you can, of course, well, ask for a mini reading. But you also can ask us about all the stuff we do on these shows. You know, you can ask us about numerology and tarot and uh, Reiki and energy healing. And Mary does you know, her crystal show the first Saturday of the month and anything about crystals you want to know. I mean, pretty much got it all covered here. And we, we love those kind of questions, by the way. You know, it's like, I've always wondered, you know, X, Y, Z about tarot or, you know, whatever that is. But uh, give us a ring at 714-816-4628. Press one on your dial pad as soon as you get through. That puts you in the caller queue. I just did a rhyme. And uh, yeah. then, <laughs> and then, uh, oh, and didn't know it. <laughs> we'll know when you called in. Yeah, we'll, we'll take the calls in the order that they came in. And uh, let's see, we got area code 417 520 412. And uh, we hope you'll all call in and chat with us. If you can't call in, hey, maybe somebody's working, listening to us. You know, they got the earbuds in, the boss is staring at them. You know, it's like, okay, so join us in the chat room. Yeah, well, our chat room is actually uh, the comments on a post on our Facebook group, Psyche Talk Radio. And uh, you always know it because it says chat with us, and there's this big down red arrow pointing to the to the comment section. That's where you, you type in there. I think Charlotte's in there. Oh, hi, Charlotte. Yep, Charlotte was guest co-hosting with me yesterday. Fabulous show. We just talked and talked and talked. Um there's an easy way to get to it, though. If you want to just open a tab in your browser, type in our website, psychictalk.net, and just write psychictalk.net slash chat, and that'll take you to the chat post for not just today's show, but like every day that we're on, you just type that in, and the chat for that particular show will pop up with all the links to listen on Blog Talk and the call-in number and what's going on on the show and everything like that. So psychictalk.net forward slash chat, you can chat with us, you can chat with each other and comment on the show, and you can also, you know, you can put in your ideas about the elves and Santa. Hmm. Uh, and uh, you can ask for a mini reading. You can type your question right there in the chat post on our Psychic Talk Radio Facebook group. So I just want to let everybody know that. Let me get out the phone number one more time, 714-816-4628. We're going to be going to calls pretty quickly, uh, so don't hesitate. You know, get your Go ahead and call in now. Get get your spot in the caller queue, 714-816-4628. Press 1 as soon as you get through. And, uh, hmm, Mary, you did a uh, – oh, I love your card of the day. you got to tell people about the card of the day you got. Yes. Well, it is from one of my favorite decks, the, the Whispers of Love deck by Angela Hartfeld. Um, with just gorgeous artwork from Josephine Wall. And it's a, today's card is about forgiveness. And I just love the way, you know, forgiveness is something, you know, we talk about a lot, you know, people struggle with, people, you know, try to figure out how to do it. But the message on the card is nothing can be gained by holding on to past disappointments. And it talks about being willing to forgive yourself and others because it leaves a door open for opportunity for future growth. You know, um, without that, you know, it's hard to restore, you know, feelings towards one another. It's hard to rebuild trust unless we do that. And really, I always think of like, um, you know, the bitterness sometimes that we can feel or that we hold um, when somebody's done something that we feel is unforgivable, <laughs> you know. Um, I think it does more more damage to us than anybody else. So I thought that that was a good message because, yeah, you're right. You know, this is the end of the year. We have a new year coming up. We have a, a lot of new stuff coming in, <laughs> right, new administration here in the States and all these things. and you know, if we can let go of, you know, things like 
you know, uh, bitterness or, or uh, disappointment that really doesn't serve us to hold on to. I think, you know, we have a better shot at having a good year and beyond. Awesome. My card of the day and the numerology of the day has to do with this time of year and how we're approaching the new year as well. I started a few days back, maybe four or five days ago, doing my Dax's dailies again, posting yeah. the card of the day and the numerology of the day. And it's been, it's been great. I, uh, I'm using it not so much as a, um, you know, making a prediction for everybody, but more like just a teaching moment, you know, teaching the numerology, yeah. teaching the cards individually. I go in-depth into it. And so I'm not going to go into all that because it's all on an article on the Tarot Gill website. All you have to do is, you know, you're going to see it on all of our social media and everything, but you can just go to the, every day, you can just go to the, uh, the Tarot Gill website. I actually have a um, program that it, it posts like at 5 a.m. my time, which is about 8 a.m. East Coast time. And just go to the article section on thetarotgill.com. And you can check out the card of the day, the numerology of the day, and uh, read in depth into the card and everything like that. And so this one is uh, the Five of Swords, and the date reduces to an eight, and the day reduces to a one. So go over to thetarotgill.com. Also on the main page, if you scroll down, uh, there's a section for articles, and it'll be the one usually at the top. You just click on it. So I'll let you guys read this on your own, but I will say that um, one way of looking at the Five of Swords that uh, people don't often talk about, you have the figures in the background looking defeated and you know they're looking towards the body of water representing their emotions. And um, you can look at it this way. They, it's an idea in tarot. So they tried to pick those up, but were unable to do so, and they gave up. And they have uh, red and yellow on their tunics. And so they had the optimism and the passion, but they failed anyway. Now, the figure in the foreground, however, is wearing a green tunic, which uh, denotes growth. Okay, so he he still has the red. You can see the red underneath. That's the passion. But he's grown and he's learned. So he isn't attempting to pick up all the swords at once, but instead – He's picking up three, and then he'll come back and pick up the rest. He's organized. He has a plan. So the message here, especially now that we're approaching a new year and uh, you're ready to start something new maybe with the day energy of one, which is about you know new beginnings and new projects and things like that, and uh, that this something new might have the potential for success, abundance, and prosperity, which is that date energy of eight, you need to make a plan. You need to break your goals and projects into smaller, actionable steps. So that's the message that came through for me for today, and you can check it out at thetarotguild.com. Also, there's links on our uh, Tarot Guild Facebook group, Psychic Talk Radio Facebook group. I have it on my profile. I have it on our everywhere, <laughs> the card of the day. I'm having fun with this, Mary. Awesome. I think that's so cool. I'm so glad you're doing that. But what a great message, too. Yeah, yeah. And the, you know? I've been getting great messages, you know, but my main focus is actually, you know, uh, teaching the cards individually, you know, and uh, the people that are learning tarot can see more in-depth things, maybe things you haven't thought of about specific cards, and then the yeah. the numbers, too. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome sauce. Awesome. Yeah. So Santa and the claws, uh, the claws, Santa Claus and, <laughs> and the elves. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You know, one of the interesting ones, you know, S- Santa is really an amalgam of, you know, you got Santa Claus and St. Nicholas and uh, Father Christmas. And I mean, it just goes on and on. And on. Uh, I love the Norwegian one. Okay. So Santa Claus is like an amalgam with the god Odin. And Odin flew across the sky on a horse with eight legs. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Maybe that's where the reindeer came from. 
Right, right. Instead of one horse with eight legs, it was at least two reindeer. <laughs> right. But that's it's it's yeah. interesting because it does like mix in like that, you know, the Santa Claus I think was just you know, and how we got the Santa Claus from Santa Claus sounding it Santa Claus mm-hmm. is just how you would say Saint Saint Nicholas Nicholas, you know. And so that's, yeah. you know, but in America, when you have like, you know, we're all immigrants for the most part, of, you know, the majority of us, you know, Americans, and we brought these traditions with us and we brought our languages with us too. And so, you know, it just kind of adds to it in a really kind of cool mm. way where we end up, it's you know, tr- having it's our, true. you know, we, like we Santa- and, you know, it it takes us to what do we have now? The uh, Santa Claus at the mall, and everybody get their picture taken, right. and you know, <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Claus and all of that. But it's kind of interesting because I think you know every country now has its own its own sort of cultural reference to it, which is kind of a neat thing. And that happens with other things too. But I don't know why you know it it just seems like it happened in a more obvious way uh, with this whole thing around Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, all, all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just like the whole okay. country, you know, we're, we're an amalgam of all these different peoples from all over the world, yeah. all, you know, coming together, just like uh, Santa Claus is really an amalgam of all these different things, you know? And uh, yeah. oh, it, it, it's, fa- it's fascinating because uh, I pull, I'm pulling cards here. Oh, Queen of Coins. Oh, my God, I'm looking at the Queen of Coins, and she's got the red, and it looks like it, – it's reminding me instantly of, of the the mall Santa Claus, you know, sitting at the, in the throne, <laughs> and you go up, and you sit sit on his uh, knee and, and get your picture taken. Oh, God. I, I think when I was a kid, I, I, uh, I was more uh, – scared of santa than anything else uh, i i don't know it was like a, uh, it's like the whole clown thing you know it, it it's like anything that's even quasi like a clown you know i mean it, he's <laughs> he's dressed. anyway won't go into that but yeah i saw that right away when i got the the queen of coins and uh i pulled some other cards here The you know i was asking about santa and it, you know i got the strangest thing came up for Santa Claus. You would, you will not believe it. But then when you start to think of it, it makes a lot of sense. Cause I'm asking, you know, yeah. was there a Santa, was there a Santa Claus? And, and I kind of got this, um, uh, three no cards and two yes cards. So it's one of those times where it's, it's not a strong, no, it's not a strong. Yes. It, it's leaning. No, but it's, kind of in the middle there it's not giving a, a a strong answer and the reason is because you know uh well you know no not we think of now but yes there was people yeah. real people in history kind of thing you know i think that's what it's talking about and the the central card for santa claus in the middle are you ready hmm. i got the devil card. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't expect that, but then when you start to when you start to think about it, so the devil card is about attachments to the material and illusions. And that makes a lot of sense. But the but the real connection is uh Baphomet. The 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 major figure on there, you know, it's not really the devil, folks, it's it's Baphomet. And this creature is an amalgam of many other creatures. You've got the the torso and arms of a man with the head of a goat, legs that look like big chicken wings, you know, with chicken feet with eagle talons at, at the bottom, you know, and and bat wings, you know. And so it's that's what I think it's saying, you know, when I when I took a second look, it's like, oh yeah, it makes sense now. Because what we think of as uh, Santa Claus is, you know, this amalgam of uh, real people and legends uh, across the entire globe. Yeah. So it made sense to me. 
Yeah, that does make sense. And you know, and there's some you know, there's some people that would that would look at that and say, like, I knew it all along, you know, people that are you know, maybe belong to like a a religion that doesn't allow for things like Santa Claus or um mm-hmm. you know, that kind of stuff where they do feel like it's evil or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but that's fascinating right. though. And how you described it makes perfect sense, especially that idea mm-hmm. of it being like a, like an amalgam, you know, like a yeah, uh, yeah. And I, and a I, chimera. Yeah, well, uh, any any creature that's a, a combination of creatures, sure, you know, uh, and there's lots of them. Yeah. I mean, there's tons. I mean, all all the, all the uh, Egyptian gods, you know, were usually an amalgam of something, yeah. uh, you know. And you know, I mean, it, it's it's not to to poke holes or you know be a party pooper here. It's just looking at it more logically. I mean, two of the cards I got was justice and the the king of swords saying, you know, well, if we look at it analytically, this the yeah. devil is, you know, this is what Santa actually is. I think the queen of coins is talking about, you know, that's the nurturer. That's mom, the mom card to me, you know, and we, we teach these things, you know, the tooth fairy and Santa Claus and everything uh, to to the kids, you know, and we we think it's a good idea because, it, well, it's always been done. And, <laughs> you know, at least yeah. since 1881, you know, and, uh, you know, but then the nine of pentacles comes up. And so this is an interesting little message that I got from this came through that actually self-reliance is better than uh, teaching legends mm-hmm. to people and having them believe something that isn't really true. And so, so mm-hmm. you know, the, there, there, there is a nice little message there, you know, about self-reliance that I like that, that came through. Did you pull cards? Yeah, I did. You know, the, the question I asked is like, you know, what, why? You know, what, why has it persisted? you know, this idea, you know, for so long when, you know, and, and what I got is really interesting. And I think is, it's like, because it gives us an opportunity um, to learn to um, give is how I would put it. You know, I've got the um, page of pentacles that comes up with the knight of cups and the four of pentacles and then it leads to the six of pentacles so instead of like kind of that and the hermit's right in the center so instead of being like you know you said self-reliant you know at the same time well <laughs> we see how self-reliance is doesn't always work you know with this with the pandemic with the pandemic going on we kind of see how people aren't always so great at being you know, not just relying, but being responsible. And the idea of the four pinnacles to me, that idea of like, you know, I'm holding on to this. I think of it as sort of like this sort of miserly energy. Like I'm going to hold on to all my stuff. And the and that to me really contrasts with the six of pinnacles where it's that giving, that generosity. And maybe, you know, the idea of Santa Claus still being taught and persisting is that idea of giving us a, all these opportunities to kind of loosen that hold on and stop being so stingy and to open up maybe our hearts as well with the Knight of Cups. And we have an excuse for giving. If you have the idea of this this figure that goes around and leaves toys for everybody and, you know, ultimately we do this thing and a lot of times where we play Santa Claus to other people in our life, mm-hmm. people in in need and it's it's fun to to wrap presents and leave cookies and milk by the fireplace and that that spirit that still something something wonderful can happen something magical can happen and a lot of times you know magic is just you know taking action <laughs> you know and, you know um so I, I think it's kind of an interesting kind of thing that, like, yeah, we don't need it. Yeah, we you don't need to rely on legends and all of that stuff. But I just think sometimes there needs to be an opportunity created. And if that's created by, you know, kind of using the scapegoat, 
of Santa Claus is like, this is my excuse for being generous. This is my excuse for being kind. And, you know, it's sad that anybody would need that to be generous or giving or kind. But if it works, it works. Right. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and, you know, that, that page of Pentacles, yeah. too, you know, to me, that's about, that is about learning. You know, it's about getting better at something. Like I think of, you know, practice makes perfect, you know, sometimes with the with the Page of Pentacles especially, you know. Um, so maybe that's it is to, to keep that spirit alive, you know, by literally attaching it to um, a, a, mm-hmm. a person, that, you know, that we create. Because it's like Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, and, you know, there's a there's a lot of um, entities, people, we could say, beings that we believe in that we don't really have a way to prove their existence, right? And so why not just add one more to it? And then also, do we create that? You know, have we created Santa Claus into more than just a legend or an idea? Like, has he now taken on? you know, something energetically that makes it more real. I don't know. Thoughts or things. Yeah. The first thing I thought of was like, yeah, don't do it just during Christmas time. What about the rest of the year being nice, you know? But uh, Exactly. I think I have more fun wrapping presents and giving presents than receiving them. I mean, I, I love receiving i love opening presents you know yeah we all do but there's something even better you know about you know the whole process oh, yeah. you know of wrapping them and oh. you know giving them ah oh, such a and, joy and finding the it's a gift finding something special or making something or creating something with someone in mind you know yeah the, uh, all of that together you know, makes it like a, and I was, I was just thinking, you know, it's like, I think in a way, you know, it, it, it definitely adds to it. It makes it more of, um, of a season, you know, it, it makes it more of a, you know, kind of a, a festival, you know, in, in that sense, that's how I kind of think of it. You know, I think of like literally, you know, time frame of like, Christmas to well, actually for me it's like from Thanksgiving until New Year's. To me, it's like festival season. You know, where this is like the time where we celebrate. You know, the the change. Uh, you know, through the solstice, and we we say goodbye to the end of the year. And I think it's important. Like I feel like we've always had this sort of need to to mark the passage of time in a sense. And I think that doing it in a celebratory, joyous, fun way and opening our hearts and, and giving and, and having, you know, Santa Claus in the tiny little elves, which I guess aren't always so tiny, right, <laughs> around, just, you know, becomes more, it adds so much to it, I think. Right. What's up with those elves? And you, you know the, the whole reason we have the elves is, uh, you know, Thomas Nast because of Nast. gave us the elves. Yeah, yeah, in, in 1881. You know, and for for those that don't know the story, uh, in 1822, Clement Clark Moore, an Episcopal minister, he so he writes a, a Christmas poem for his three daughters, an account of a visit from Saint Nicholas, and people suggested that he publish it and he didn't want to publish it because it was so frivolous but finally goes ahead and publishes it it becomes twas the night before christmas and that gets the whole ball going and then uh nast was hired by harper's weekly to do images for their magazine for christmas and he drew on moore's poem and he creates the first likeness that matches our modern image of santa claus and by the way, both of these, New York City, <laughs> this is where it all comes from, you know. And, and he makes the rotund, uh, cheerful man with the full white beard and the sack laden with toys for lucky children. And 
he gives us the you know the bright red suit trimmed with white fur. He gives us the North Pole workshop, elves, his wife, Mrs. Claus. It all comes from Nast, this one guy, you know, who created all of this just because Harper's Weekly was like, hey, we need some for our magazine for Christmas. You know, we wouldn't have what we have now if it wasn't for this one guy that, you know, went way beyond what Harper's Weekly asked for and just went all out, you know. And I just find that fascinating. Yeah, you know, it is it is fascinating. And it's also, you know, sometimes, you know, it's it, it just gives you that idea of like what people connect with, you know. Mm-hmm. Because there's, there's all these stories, you know, and you don't know what's going to, like, take off and become something, like, you know, embraced in that way. So I think it's, I think it's fascinating. Absolutely. And the, and the elves yeah. themselves, I mean, it's kind of like with St. Nicholas, right? You've got, you've got this saint that had all these legends about him and, and all of that stuff. And then that evolves into our modern day mall Santa. Right. Um, with the with the elves is kind of similar because you had um, legends and stories from, you know, especially like in Scandinavia of elves and people, you know, it wasn't just legends and stories. I mean, I think it's almost like you could fairly say it was almost like a syncretic like belief system. You had like a lot of like, mm. um, you know, people that were, you know, Christians, you know, or became Christians while they brought their stories of elves and their beliefs about that w- with them. So that, you know, the two kind of went together, like the first... Much earlier legends, that, yeah. Yeah, the the first people that wrote about um, Christians, you know, very similar to the, you know, the people writing about fairies, like in Ireland, were Christian monks, you know, just recording, like, the beliefs and the, and the stories of the, of the people. Um, and mm-hmm. so the elf thing, yeah, Nast is the one that like tied them together by, I think, you know, um, refer, you know, referring to even Santa as a, as a jolly old elf. And I think that was, yeah, that's what I was going to say was that, you know, it's interesting because like in, uh, he's depicted as this, you know, large figure with these little elves, but then, you know, in other stories, you know, he was an elf, you know, and uh, in the Scandinavian yeah. one, there's actually this jolly elf named uh, Joel Thompson that delivers gifts in a sleigh, but drawn by goats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I yeah. thought was fascinating. Yeah. And it's just kind of funny because it's like you already had, you know, people that knew what the word elf meant. And for a lot of people, even if they weren't from Scandinavia, it gave you this idea of this otherworldly person, this otherworldly creature. You know that this that this wasn't like a regular human that they were talking about. And the about. magic. And the exactly, exactly. Um, so, I I kind of wondered, like, you know, for one thing, there are you know a lot of people that do have a belief in elves even today, and they're not thinking of, you know, Santa Claus in connection with them. But I just wonder, like, you know, what do the elves think? <laughs> you know, that's what I was thinking, like, you know, if there are, in fact, these these, these elves and they have, you know, some level of awareness of what goes on in the in the human world, you know, how do they feel about it? How do they feel about the association? How did they, you know, feel about the movie? Elf? Okay, they're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> right? They're not happy. Is that what you're they're, getting? <laughs> no, they're 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 not happy. I, I get the nine of wands. Okay, so here you've got this, you know, slender, tall, battle worn yeah. person, you know, and the elves are like, hey, you know, we're we're warriors, <laughs> and and we're yeah. tall. <laughs> And we've been through a lot, and you know, uh, uh, yeah, they're not happy. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm getting from that. 
Yeah, and I, you know, I, I, I drew a few cards, and like the first thing that came up was the moon card. So they might have been like a little bit like confused or suspicious of it. You know, like wait a minute, what's going on? Then I see the 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 death card in the four of cups. So it's like it's interesting. You know, the they probably don't like it and they may be, you know, at this point a bit, you know, becoming a, li- a little bit like, okay, just ignore these people. <laughs> you know, they got it wrong. They don't know. <laughs> you know? I'm not even going to look at them. So it is a, it's kind of what you're saying. Like they're not happy. And I feel like they're, you know, flat out like saying like, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And in, the, in the Wade Smith version of the, nine of wands you know he's holding this staff and he's kind of looking yeah. off uh to the right and kind of the expression on his face is like oh please don't even talk yeah. to me about the sand elves you know <laughs> <laughs> oh wow that's funny i mean i guess it's not you know but it is <laughs> i think it's funny they probably don't think it's funny <laughs> oh boy Anyway, there you go, Santa and the Elves, folks. I don't know if there was any other questions we needed to ask the tarot about Santa and the Elves. I think we pretty much covered it, but did you have anything else yeah. Mary, before we move on? Well, no, I, I think that, that 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 pretty much covers it. You know, the only thing I was kind of wondering about, you know, as I was reading about, like, St. Nicholas and stuff mm-hmm. and just thinking, like, you know, did he really, you know, did he really do the things attributed to him, you know, because even just him as a saint without Santa Claus the is actual, kind of like, The whoa, actual historical yeah. figure? Yeah. Ah, yes. Okay, drawing a card. Wait, drawing cards. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to look at this. i got to look at this. Uh, I got I got to see, you know, he was, uh, oh, this is fascinating. Yeah, okay, I'm getting yet. Yeah, I'm getting yeses, yes, yes, yes. Uh, eight of cups. So in the eight of cups, mm. you know he's uh, uh, stacked this all up and he's moving away, onward and upward. And in in the original story, he was actually a wealthy person, and yeah. and he uh, uh, he walked away from that, and instead went out. And he used his wealth to help the poor. Mm. Yeah. And the, and the Empress and the, the Queen of Coins shows up. There's that Queen of Coins again, that nurturing energy. That's yeah, He was the nurturer. What are you getting? It's interesting. I'm getting the Knight of Swords. With the lover's card, the justice card, the devil card opposite the justice card. And then in, at the end, you know, the, the two of pentacles. So I feel like he was multitasking. <laughs> but also that, that maybe like later on at the, in the end, maybe at least half of, of what we hear about him, you know, um, are things he actually did. And then making that choice, you know, uh, with the lover's card. To to kind of make things more equitable, more balanced with the mm-hmm. so that idea of helping the poor, you know, is interesting. And maybe you know he had to choose right. between that and you know being that wealthy person that you know maybe had you know some level of you know control over people, and he he chose instead to walk away from that, like you're saying. So it's it's uh it's really kind of interesting. So yeah, I feel like it. Yeah. At least half of it, everything that sprung up centuries later about him, you know, in the retelling of of all his deeds and stuff, maybe like fifty percent of that is true. But ultimately, you know, this is somebody who did try to um, to make the world a better place for people. Right. I think he wanted that to be his legacy. I mean, I got the the Ten of Pentacles. And then the King of Cups, he mm. was emotionally satisfied, fulfilled, yeah. you know, by doing that. Wow. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, my God. The tarot reveals all people. I'm telling you. Oh, it does. 
we learn so much <laughs> with these psychic spins. It's like, whoa. <laughs> I love the psychic spins. I love the psychic spins. Wow. Well, if you're listening live out there, you haven't called in yet. You know, this is the time to do it. 714-816-4628. Press one on your dial pad. We'd love to chat with you. You ready to take some calls? Yeah, let's do it. All righty. Should I? Should I go, go ahead. ahead and do the upcoming shows before we do that? Get that out of the way. Oh we're... sure, because you know I was I was just going to actually say that you know that this is going to be fun because uh, we're not doing this again until we come. Well, you'll be back on the second with your show, but as far as you and I together, yeah. it's one, two, three weeks from now. It's it's uh, January ninth ah. is when we're going to be doing this again, and we got a special guest too. So. Uh, yeah, go yeah. ahead and tell everybody what's coming up on the network. And then what right. they call. So on on the Psychic Talk Radio Network this week, our next show is going to be on Monday. That's the Wisdom of the Soul show with your host Janice Fuchs at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. And that will be followed by Wednesday, um, the Compassionate Light Healing and Guidance Hour with host Thurn Hahn, and she's doing her December series wrap-up of 2020 Reflections. And then it's Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> and, and for me and Dax, you know, we'll see you next year. But Janice will be back on that on the 28th on, on the Wisdom of the Soul show, and so will Catherine on the 30th on that Wednesday the Compassionate Light and Healing uh, healing and Guidance Hour. And then, uh, yeah, I'll see you next year. I'll be back on January 2nd talking about crystal resolutions. And my crystal for January is emerald. And we're going to be talking about how you can use crystals to support your intentions for the New Year's, plus doing open lines and crystal mini readings to kick off the New Year. I can't believe it. 2020 is almost out the door. Good riddance. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Goodbye, 2020. <laughs> Hello, 2021. <laughs> but those oh, are yes. the shows coming up on the network, and you can find those really easily by going to psychictalk.net forward slash upcoming. They're all listed there with show times and links and everything. Yeah, I actually have it all the way through January 16th, and uh, I even mentioned Sharona's uh, open line show on the 24th, and so a lot of it is listed there, and uh, uh, you just took us all the way through the the end of the year, and then we have all these great shows coming in, in the beginning of the year. I mean, it's it's great stuff. That show, when when we come back together, we have a special guest, Certified Tarot Master Corby Mitlead, who joined the Guild and got certified with us. And she, she's fabulous. She's the author of three books. And, oh, we're going to have a lot of fun on that show. And we're going to do mini readings, yeah. too. She said she's down with the mini readings. And uh, Maria G. Moss is coming back on, on Sharona's show on the 10th. And I know I've got a... Um, uh, you know, the beginning of the year, I always like to do the world year number. So we're going to do the 2021 world year number and personal year numbers on the 8th when Dr. Rose and I come back. We're off for three weeks as well. And uh, you and I, I know we're doing New Year's readings on the 16th. So, yeah, there's a lot of great stuff coming up in January, and it, it's going to be a better year. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying it now, you know. <laughs> Awesome sauce. Yes. Oh, gosh. Let's see who's been waiting the longest here since, like, uh, probably before the show. Uh, let's see. Area code 417. Caller, are you there? Hello. Hi, I'm oh, still Oh, good. She here. hasn't fallen asleep. <laughs> what, what's your <laughs> name? Where are you calling from? <laughs> my, name is, my name is Linda. I'm calling from Florida. Um, so am I okay to answer a question here? Yes, yeah. go right ahead. We're pulling cards. Okay. okay. Uh, Awesome. All right. So I work currently work at a a place that I do sales, and I am really trying to see whether I should continue staying there or leaving for another particular job. And once you guys pull the cards, I might I'll kind of explain why <laughs> to some degree. Okay. 
Okay, so okay. should you stay or should you go, <laughs> right? What's that? Should you stay or should you go? Stay or should oh, yeah. you go? <laughs> so I sing the song as I go off? <laughs> right. Oh, wow. I'm getting the feeling. So what's coming up in the cards is definitely no, you should not stay where you are. And it, it's like a couple of different things. One is you're not – you don't seem emotionally fulfilled here is with, with what I'm getting, you know. There's also some, you know, you, which you can elab- – you said you were going to elaborate later anyway. And uh, it, it seems like there's some, you know, maybe some hinky stuff going on in the background. So that's what yeah. I'm getting on that. Yeah, yeah there's a little yeah, bit of shadiness that's going on. Y- yeah, because um, the I moon like card shows up. The, the moon card shows mm-hmm. up right next to the seven of swords. Both of them are about, you know – Things not being crystal clear and things going on behind uh, people's backs they're not seeing, manipulation, tactics, all that kind of stuff with the Seven of Swords. Mary, what are you getting? You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not getting that stuff. What I'm getting is the sense of, like, are you stagnating there? I feel like, you know, you're right. not able to, to get ahead. And there's a sense of, like, just feeling more and more disconnected from mm-hmm. uh, what's going on there. The Eight of Cups comes up, the Fool card, the, and then we have the Emperor in the end there. So it's really interesting. The Fool card is great. It's like saying, like, take that, take that leap of faith, you know, take mm-hmm. that jump, take, take that chance. The Eight of Cups, you know, is about um, moving onward and upward, even though, you know, it can be an emotional thing, you know, and sometimes we can leave behind the things that have been kind of holding us back and sort of disappointing us. Um, the emperor card in the future position I think is great because it's like, is this change not just because of how you feel there and whatever else may be going on, um, but also the need to really feel like, okay, you know, I need something that's like more stable than this is. I need something that maybe like people do play by the rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Kind of a um, funny. I don't want to feel like I'm working so, for the mafia here or something. You know? Right. Right. You know, so I think it's like Dax and I, I think Dax, we're kind of on the same page about, you know, going seems to be in our best interest. Right. Right. I, and you guys are just wording it just differently, but yeah. The, and, and yes, there is, shady stuff that's going on that's whether they try to cover it up or whatever um and i'm just kind of not that's just not my mo and i'm very by i don't know i want to say mm-hmm. we're not all 100 percent by the book but for the most part yes and i'm very more genuine to help the person um they're all about the money and whatever their their own mm-hmm. personal gain um so but there's this other gentleman that i been talking to that I may um, work with him whenever time is is the right time that he's available to um, to have me on board. Is that the right move that you see me doing, or is my should I venture somewhere else completely? Hmm. No, that could that could be emotionally fulfilling. Uh, it you know it it's all it's all about you know that to me you know really mm-hmm. where you know it's it, it, it's fitting better you know for you and uh i i think that with that person yeah that that could be a good one <laughs> okay could be or is it something that's going to be temporary yet you think uh, I, I, I i really you. honestly don't i honestly don't know Okay. Yeah, I, what I'm getting, I'm getting the Seven of Cups, like, you know, yeah, consider that, look into that some more, but keep your options open, because there might mm-hmm. be, you know, a other, lot of other opportunities as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The reason I ask is I just don't want to go from one problem issue to another. Right. Yeah, yeah. So. No, it's looking much better. Yeah. That's, that's a much better option. But okay. thanks for calling in, Linda. Yeah. Happy holidays. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much for clearing it up for me. Absolutely. You You too. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. 
Let's see who's been waiting the longest. Waiting almost as long as 417, Linda, is 412. Let's go to 412. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling Hi. from? Heather, I'm calling from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Awesome. That's our home yeah. state, both of us. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, what's so your name, honey? I'm to see if I – it's Heather. Heather. Heather, okay. Hi, Heather. Heather. Yeah. Hello. I was calling in to see if I could get a mini reading um, on my love life. I had a really, Mm -hmm. actually had a pretty good 2020 from like a career perspective, Um, Mm -hmm. you know, despite like it was just being overall bad year for the world. Um, My job and everything has been going really good, but um, not too much with my love life. So I wanted to see like if that's going to take a turn at some point. Mm. So, like, is so, there so somebody you're not seeing in? anybody? No. Um, I had something end kind of, like, right at the beginning of this year. And really, it's mm-hmm. kind of not been, not much happening the whole year. Ah. It's your turn to go first, Mary. What are you getting? Okay. Well, I'm doing a... Uh... Kind of the first thing that came up, I'm doing kind of a combination tarot and oracle reading on this because I have a deck that's all oh, about nice. the love. And um, you know, the first thing that came up was this message of waiting for love. It's like, is she waiting? <laughs> that's what we're doing right now. Um, but look, you know, <laughs> things start moving. Things start moving in the love life direction here. We go from the 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 energy of the hermit card right, where we're kind mm-hmm. of just contemplating our, our fingernails, you know, to, <laughs> so like, not a lot going on, to, like, all of a sudden right. we've got this rush of energy with the eight of wands and the magician card in the end there. Um, part okay. of what's um, being recommended here, you know, is to, you know, have faith that it is on the way and to um, nurture it, you know, when it, you start in this new relationship coming up, the person um, may be similar. The only court card that I have that shows up here is the Knight of Pentacles. So that could be somebody who is, I mean, literally it could be somebody who astrologically is an earth sign, you know, so that would be okay. like your Taurus or your Virgo or your Capricorn, right? Okay. Energy, you know, it doesn't have to be. But the, the Knight of Pentacles, it's like to me, when I think of the, the court cards as people, it's like the Knight of Pentacles, I can count on him. You know, he's consistent. You know, he may not be somebody who, you know, is spontaneous and jumps into things, but I feel like there it's somebody that, you know, is dependable in a lot of ways and also can have, like, the generosity and the nurturing qualities, too, you know, so instability. So, you know, that's that's maybe talking about, you know, some ideas about what this person is like, what their character is like. It could be like the Knight of Pentacles. Um, you know, and then the converse of that is it's like, come on, let's get moving. Move it. You know, that can kind of take too much time, you know. Yeah. But this, yeah. this looks good to me um, for, you know, your love life changing. And with that one card, the magician in the end, then, you know, maybe we are talking about, you know, in the new year. I don't think it's going to happen between now and the end of the year, even though that's a real short period of time anyways. That mm-hmm. would be wild. Um, and, but yeah. I think it's just saying, like, you know, it, you know the, the magician card is saying, like, we've got, you've got everything you need for this to happen, and you can make it happen. It's that idea of manifesting. Um, so okay. let's see what Dax is getting definitely going to be a, a, a period of delay where you're, you're, you're looking and getting things together. I, I'm getting all these wands cards, which is passion. So, you know, you take this time as your opportunity to really get cl- crystal clear on the type of relationship you want, you know, the type of person you want to draw in kind of thing, you know, spend, spend the time uh, getting you know, really crystal clear on this. I mean, I, I get the feeling you, know, you feel kind of restricted right now. 
Um, and then there's going to be this period of, you know, searching, a little bit of a balance act, balancing act going on with the two of pentacles. I'm getting a lot of twos here too, which is relationship. So that, that's really good. But, uh, you know, it's, you know, setting imminent change is, is part of that card. And, and then, you know, once you get through this, this waiting period, then the four of wands shows up, you know, celebration. And then at the end, you're on back on the top of your game, the seven of wands. Okay. And so that's uh, also the timing card. So I'm looking at seven weeks as soon as seven weeks. Yeah. And I, I'm not getting any core cards. You know, no individuals are showing up. That's because right now you're in that that period of delay. But take advantage of this time, this next seven weeks, to really get crystal clear on what you want to draw in there. I hope okay. that helps so, out. You know, it, like, how no, do you want to feel? You know, what kind of partner are you looking for? How do you mm-hmm. envision that relationship playing out? Because the other thing is when we... Are you going, are you are, going skiing? Are you going to the movies? Are you going to dinner? Yeah. You know, what does it look like? What does it feel like? Yeah. What are you doing? Okay. <laughs> Get crystal clear on it. <laughs> then you're telling the universe what to bring in for the new year. Okay. And then... And then call us back and let us know all about him, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Will do. We'll chat with you next awesome. year, Heather. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Literally. Okay. Happy holidays. Sure thing. Happy holidays. Yeah. Thank you. Happy holidays. <laughs> oh, that was a that was a good one. That was a good one. Let's see who's been waiting the longest after Heather. It looks like seven eight six. Area code seven eight six. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi. Um, good afternoon. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I had two really strange things happening this week. One, mm-hmm. I started a new job. I had started a new job that offered remote job working, and then I got let go of four days after after I found out that I needed to work on the weekends and after work hours, and I have a child that studies from home. So they had no qualms about it, and so I'm out of that. And then the second one is that I had met online someone, and then he ended up being a catfish. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. So two, it's like the, two the same theme, weeks. though. Of like things not being what they what they seem. What oh yes. And before we, what was your name again, and where were you calling from? Oh, Luz from Miami. Luz from Miami. Yes. Gaps, yeah, is it your turn? My turn? I can't remember. I think it was my turn. I, and I your turn. Or is... I'm not get, I'm not getting some of this. I'm sorry. I don't know. If it's the volume, I have my volume up as far as I could go here, you know. Um, um, right. And, and, I, I have... uh, and, I, and hold on. And and I, I think I was initially confused because my, my mind was on, wait a minute, we haven't even got the name yet. I'm, I, where, where are you calling from? Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? You know, and you went into the <laughs> thing, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. And, you know, right. I, I heard about, you know, the, the job thing. And then uh, you met uh-huh. the guy, but then I, uh, I, I did not catch what happened there. Mary, you said something about it similar to the job thing, but I didn't hear. Right. What, what well, let me it? catch you up he, real he was, quick. It's, this is Luce from Miami, and two weird things happened to her today. She got a job, and then after she got it, she found out that she had to, you know, work weekends, all this stuff which she can't do, and then she was like, right. let go. So she that had I the got. job that disappeared. She guy online, he seemed good, but then he turned out to be a catfish. He turned out to yep. be a what? A catfish. Have you ever seen that show Catfish? Oh, where that's what somebody... I that's what I wasn't getting. That's what I wasn't getting. Oh, no. She said catfish <laughs> and and I didn't catch I didn't catch the, the word and no, I'm not familiar with that. That makes no sense to me. I don't know what a catfish is. Besides oh, the actual okay. catfish. Good, good, good. So you're going to have right. to explain that oh, to me, Mary. Awesome. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, so, well, basically, and what I what I said, the similarity is, is like both things turned out to be other than what they what they seem to be. 
So, like, with a catfish, like, you meet somebody online, you're having, like, what you think is a great conversation, you're getting to know them and everything, and then they turn out to, like, either not be who they are or they were just kind of pranking you with the whole thing. Or they, in the, yes. you know, it's, it's, so right. want their money. Was that, oh, okay. Yeah. You want their money at the end. Wanted money at the end. That's the worst kind of catfish. That's like exactly. a giant catfish. To help them. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, I think there's another term for that, you know. A scammer. A lot of okay. <laughs> we so, can't say so on air. I, I guess it's good. For work, yeah, so for work, I got a bait and switch, right? They told me everything right. I right. Bait to and switch. here to negotiate to get me in, and then they switched it around, hoping that I would just say mm. yes, yes, yes to everything. And then the other person, it was just like, you know, like coming to Florida, blah, 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 working to to get here. And then when he couldn't Uh uh, finalize everything, then asking for financial help. Mm. Of course, yeah. And that's actually a common scam, actually. Uh, Yeah. Okay, so now that we have all that, though, Luz, how do do we boil that down to a question? What's your question for us? So how do I get out of this? (laughs) Because the horrible part of it is that two weeks ago, I had two job offers, and mm. I had cho- I chose the one that this happened to me too. So the other one I reached out to, and thankfully they haven't hired that person. So I am meeting mm-hmm. again with the director on Monday, but I don't oh, good. want them to then, you know, like bargain again for the salary. You know, I want him to stick to what he had last offered me. And, and then I don't know if he's going to be comparing me to somebody that may be better. So there's nothing set in stone. And then regarding the guy, I mean, like, should I continue online? Should I just leave it be, you know, and just continue? Just I don't know. I mean, do you see anything regarding work and regarding relationships? Because I'm also pending well, a <sighs> Yeah, I mean, there there is an opportunity coming in for sure because I got the Ace of Swords. There, there's still, you know, a period of looking. I don't think that this, the job you're talking about is going to be it. I mean, I, I've got too many cards, like the two of, two of wands, three of wands, you know, uh, uh, casting out the net, waiting for the ship to come in. You know, it, uh, it, it it's going to take a little bit longer. And, uh, you know, the, the feeling I'm getting is, uh, well, there's a couple of things coming up here, like, you know, don't, don't be attached to one outcome that it has to be a certain way with, the, with the career wise kind of thing. Uh, as, as far as the other, you know, I, I'd actually, I mean, this is just the feeling I'm getting that, you know, what's in the best interest here is to focus on one thing, get that taken care of before you shift your focus to, and of course career being, foundational you know you would focus on the career get that settled and then after the new year then you know start looking at there's nothing wrong with looking online and meeting new people that way i mean god a lot of people have to do it that way because there's not the physical opportunities to go to places and meet people the way and that was never a good idea anyway you know meeting people that way you know but even going out with, you know, friends or, uh, you know, being there introduced by friends or anything along those lines, you know, a, a lot of us uh, online is what we got right now, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, you just have to be really careful. Really, 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 really careful. Yeah. You know. But it was within and, a matter of two weeks, so it wasn't long. <laughs> and the job was only within a matter of four days. <laughs> Exactly. Well, yeah. yeah. So it's like so one day after the other. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah. so that's what I'm getting. What are you getting, Mary? Well, I I do think that you know when it when it comes to you know the I I kind of just focused on the love life part because I thought I just felt like Dex I felt like you covered the, really extensively the 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 career thing and gave her some good advice on that and looking at the at the love life I I thought it was interesting because it's like there's such an emphasis here on nurturing relationships you know um, creating one befriending bonding um, as a first stage and you know the the catfish guy for whatever reason it just seemed like 
you know, that it, like it escalated quickly in a sense. Um, mm-hmm. And and so it's saying like this time, you know, really like work on this because there will be a next time. There will be somebody, <laughs> somebody else, you know, coming in. Um, you you want to focus on, you know, creating the foundation to have a good relationship. That foundation can be um, friendship at the start, you know, and then bonding more with the person and really um, allowing it to develop and not, you know, um, putting too much pressure on yourself or, you know, on the relationship to to really be like everything you, you know, you want at once. I feel like it's saying, like, take your time. Take your time. Get to know somebody. Really find people. You know, you're going to find somebody that you have a reason to bond with for whatever whatever that reason is. I'm not quite sure. It could be mutual interest. It could be really just a sense of humor. It seems to be the biggest thing. So you've got a really great sense of humor, and it's like finding someone you can laugh with is what this is saying. So okay. um, I think, you know, stay open. I think whether we be online or, or not, it's like Dax is saying, online is kind of like what <laughs> what we've got at the moment. And it can, you know, you can definitely find, you know, someone that way. People do it all the time. But, you know, now you know that you can also find the other, <laughs> you know, you can also find the catfish. So it's like, you know, that idea of like throwing, you know, throw that one back into the water and um, find a better fish, you know, not a catfish, but maybe a good old trout <laughs> or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Normal. There's lots of fish, fish in the sea. So, uh, right? so w- <laughs> one last question regarding the interview that I have on Monday what came out when you threw the card? Is it a possibility that I will start there, even though you don't see permanence? Well, like I like I said, I mean, what I got was that this is not going to be the one that that you're, you're still going to be looking. There's going to be an opportunity coming up, but it's in the okay. future. Yeah, the okay. Ace of Swords is it, it was in the future position. And okay. so, yeah, I, I mean, it, it could happen and just end up being temporary, but, you know, that's not the feeling I was getting. I, I was, I was getting that you're still going to be searching. Oh, try my, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. And happy oh. holidays. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. Thanks for calling. Thanks. Have a great Thanks weekend. Thanks for the call. Oh boy, yeah. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, you know, but uh, that's what's showing up. I mean, uh, you know, if, if I only had one card, but I, I had like multiple cards talking about, you know, continuing to be searching you know out there, was, you know. Yeah, and while you were while you were doing the reading, you know, I just got this feeling like it's like there, there's a reason. Like maybe there's a reason that she kind of, you know, turned it down in the first place, you know, like kind of went with the Mm -hmm. other option instead. Like maybe there's just something about that that on some level, sometimes I think that we get pulled in different, you know, pulled away from opportunities because somehow, even if we don't consciously realize it, it's just not the greatest fit for us. Yeah. Yeah, that's right started off with talking about how I was getting cards talking about um, not being attached to it uh, coming out a yeah. certain way and and, and uh, that could also be you know she was talking about you know the the income um, yeah and I, I just I just it didn't doesn't feel right it doesn't feel right yeah Okay, so let's see. Who's been waiting the longest? It looks like area code 520. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Are you there, Mary? I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, the uh, the switchboard kind of is hooked. 
freezing up here. Let's try it. Try again here. Hello, caller, are you there? Five two zero. Hello. I don't know. It might be Blog Talk. It might be the switchboard. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna put them. Gonna put them back on hold here and go to uh, the next caller this way in August. Hello, caller. What's hi, your name? Hi, Where are you doctor. calling from? Hello, Drag. Hi, Mary Brown. It's Melissa. AZ. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, sir. And I'll talk to you Monday. Um, Monday or Sunday? Or, I know it was a week ago. I, I have a. Can you help me out with a situation to get some clarity? Um, I'm pretty much um, trying to. Um, well, it, it, it's a new interest, but something uh, occurred. It was a little small situation that uh, he he didn't do it, but I I got a little bit upset, so I um, instead of me talking about it, I don't want to talk about it. I, I, I'm overwhelmed, too much work. I just uh, ignore. I I kind of ignore him for three for three hours. But this is the thing. What 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 was the intention? I know it was it was raining very hard last night and it was very foggy. That uh, he waited till I got the ve- he waited till I got the vehicle. He did follow me. He followed me like eighty uh, percent out. Uh, and it was right behind me, and then I I went to speed limit. I changed the lane. He was right there. I just want to know what was that? What was that about? Was it because I I ignore him? Not to be rude. I just it's like calm the waters. I'm just trying to, uh, for him to reflect. I know he, I know he's a smart guy. I know he's a smart man. Um, but I have, I just, uh, my brain just did not I didn't want to deal with it. Um, and I just letting it flow like water, nice and smooth. So that's, that's what my attention, I'm, I'm not sure what was the attention. He was trying to get my attention by, by driving. Uh, I, I just find that I don't, I don't get nothing negative. I get too many things in my mind, but I'm just not clear on that. Hmm. Yeah. So, okay, um, I am a little lost, but <laughs> but because it was a lot. No, it was a lot of information. Yeah. But, You're well, lost. Okay, so okay, lost. okay, okay. What was the, this is a question? So, Sorry, guys. I'm a quickly. Well, what, what was he doing? Yeah, well, that he you, you keep talking me? about the guy, but we don't even know who the guy is or what he has to do with you. And, you know, you just went into this whole story without, like, giving us anything. You know, we have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. It was like being lost in the desert. You're right. So the, there's some new interest. Uh, I like him, and I, I talked mm. to him all the time nicely. And um, But yesterday, last night, he waited for me to leave. He followed me. Mm. And it was raining. It was foggy. He drove behind me, and then I, I turned lanes. And, I mean, after a while, uh, you know, because I have to go a different route, I didn't see him no more. But um, I did I did, ignore, mm-hmm. I did ignore him for the past three hours. And I know he didn't like that because I can see he keeps staring at me. But I just want to know the, I just want to know what was the intention of him following me. Right. Okay. So this is somebody. It's like a, a kind of a new love interest in your life. You're getting to know each yes. other. Everything's cool. But then he does this weird thing and like follows you in your car, and you're like, "What's up with that?" Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. even what yeah. even yeah. even you know, we're you're you're putting intention on this person. In other words, you know, we we have yeah. to ask. You know, even was he doing that? Maybe he wasn't following you at all. You're just assuming because he's going the same direction that he's following you. You know, I mean, that, that, that's, you know, uh, he was. mind reading. He was. <laughs> you know? I know, no, no, he, he was, because I, I, I turned, he got behind me, I moved, he was behind me, and he, he so, yeah. Yes. He, don't go, he don't go that way, yeah. But anyway, I just mm. want to know if, if he, uh, what, what do you pick up from last night's uh, situation? Like, if he uh, reflected on what he did wrong, or uh, what was his attention? Like, did he feel bad because they ignore him? What do you pick up on all of that? Give me some three different scenarios. Well, I'm not sure how to go about asking this, but just 
I'm a, little, right. I'm a little bit going in circles. Okay. Well, That's a drag. Yeah, you know, um, well, it's just looking at that aspect of it, you know, um, it's kind of interesting, the the cards I'm getting, because um, I'm getting like two aces. The ace of cups is a central card, you know, so it is about like the beginning of a relationship, you know, a fresh start, new love, opportunity for love, that kind of interest. So I think, you know, he's definitely got this interest in you, right? And it is kind of you know, all these, I get all these ones, the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, and the Magician card. They're all one card saying, like, this is still new, so maybe we don't really know each other well enough um, quite yet um, to know, like, you know, behavioral patterns, that kind of stuff. The Tower card comes up underneath those two Aces, so I think by you ignoring him now, the Queen of Cups comes up, I, I feel like that's representing you, whether you're a water sign or not. I think it's just like I am worth trying to. Okay, good. Go well, to. then it's really representing you. Uh, awesome. And so, I feel like he thinks like he may have blown it in some way by you ignoring him. Um, so that idea of like, does he? You know, I think you said, or maybe I, I heard it, and you didn't say it, but this idea of like, does he regret that behavior? Kind of right. And. So I don't really see necessarily regret. I think, you know, him thinking like, okay, you know, I messed up here somehow. You know, he may not, you know, have the whole concept. But with the magician card at the end there, you know, it, it, it's interesting because you may see something from him of him trying to like kind of get back to the start, get things back on track. So I would, I would just kind of, you know, See what happens here. Um, let's see what Dax is getting. Hi, Dax. Hey, doctor. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, he he's just moving faster. And he is contemplating all this because the hermit card shows up, but he's the knight of wands. You know, he it's passion. He's got the passion. He's uh, got the ability to live, un, uh, to love unconditionally. Uh, but the Knight of Wands sometimes has an unpredictable nature. You know, he takes hasty actions, but he's usually proven right in the end. And you, you got the, the Eight of Wands there, which is things happening quickly. You know, maybe he wants things to happen more quickly than you do. And he's rushing off to uh, galloping towards the left, and the card to the left of him is the Ten of Cups, which is hearth and home. You know, he's... He's got it in his mind. He's all the, already headed towards, you know, the happy family life kind of thing in his head. So that's what's going on here. But it's nothing nefarious, nothing bad. It's just, you know, he's in a different time frame, speed, or something than you are. And that's all. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you, can you please tell me quick, what does this mean that he keeps telling me, uh, I'm a woman, I like a woman. I, I, I do I like a woman, but I, I'm not sure, like, I hear that so much. That I hear that so much from him that I freeze. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking there. I'm not getting that. Are you getting that, Mary? I'm not understanding. I didn't. I didn't hear what it is. What the phrase is? He keeps saying to you. He keeps telling me that that I'm a woman. I should be uh, more of a woman. And ah. he's looking at me. I'm like, I'm not sure. I just freeze. I just smile. Okay. Got it. Thank you. He's telling you you should be more like a woman. Like, what does that I am mean? a woman. I'm not sure. Yeah, what that means. right? Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> like, that's weird. <laughs> oh, so that's what you're asking, basically. Like, what? what is up with that? Like, really? He keeps saying that to you? That's. Hmm. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> look at you, you're a woman. It kind of fits, I Mary, that, though, with one of the, you know, the cards that I'm getting. It, mm-hmm. He's, he, he's the knight of wands. He, he's romantic, and he feels that women are supposed to be romantic. And you're not reciprocating the way he is, right. you know, and so be more of a, be more of a woman. Usually it's, the, usually these situations are 180 degrees backwards. The the woman is 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 romantic and all ready for the guy. The guy is is standoffish, and you know has to come around to things. 
in this case, you guys are flip flopped. Okay, he he's the romantic dreamer. He already has it all figured out, and he wants you to be more of quote unquote a woman. In other words, being romantic like he is. Receptive. It's all there in the cards. It, it, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and so that that's all that means. You know, and, and of course you're going to freeze up because if you are not feeling that way. <laughs> And he's saying yeah. things like that, you know, you know, you you might get confused and you might also, uh, you're definitely going to freeze up, you know? So, yeah. And of course, you know, when any of this stuff comes up, uh, it's all about, you know, relationships are all about communication. So when in, any of this stuff comes up and he does anything, you know, whether it's following you at, in the car, whether it's saying be, be more like a woman, you know, ask him. You know, why are you not asking him, okay, what do you mean by that, be more like a woman? Or ask yeah. him, you know, were you following me last night? What, what, what's up with that? You know, just ask. You know, d- don't make things up in your head. Don't analyze. Don't um, come up with scenarios. Instead, just ask, you know, to get it from the horse's mouth. Find out what's really going on. Okay, I, I will ask. Um, he seems to have a lot of. Uh, he has a big answer for a short question, and it drives me crazy. But after yeah, that, well, you gotta, you gotta communicate, <laughs> yeah. and, so, and that's the way some people communicate. You're actually kind of lucky because, in most situations like this, the male tends to be not as communicative, doesn't want to go into long explanations. You know, you're actually <laughs> got somebody that really <laughs> wants to actually explain it to you. You know, I mean, what yeah. more do you want, lady? What more do you want, lady? You know, it's, like, it's like, you know, you got the romantic dreamer that actually talks and tells you what you know, what's going on. <laughs> Come on. You know, but, and you know, it, if that's not what you're looking for, then yeah. fine. You got to tell them and you got to move on. You, you, you got to, you know, you can't have it both ways. You got to either go with it or don't go with it. That's my But also him (laughs) him saying like, you know, why can't you be more like a woman? You know, it's like, look, you know, you know, women are like at least half of the planet. Right. So being like a woman could be like being like anything, you know, Mm. he needs to get to know you and who you are and what you are like. You know, all those ones, Mm -hmm. all those aces that, that I got, it's like saying like, look, we really we really need to know each other better. You know, and then we're not going to have these confusions because then we'll we'll have an understanding of, of kind of what we're like, what you're like as a, yeah. as a as a person, and what he's like as a person. So that you know, then we have that understanding, and that's how we build relationships is by building understanding and getting to know each other. Communication, spending time together. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. That's oh, what we got for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I hope that helps you out. It did a yeah. lot. I will, I, will, I will have to be patient and listen. I will take your advice. Awesome. so great, guys. Amazing. Yeah, uh, thanks. Counseling, thanks Black calling. Coach, Tara, thank you. Thank you. All righty. Awesome. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Wow. That was some interesting calls. and. <laughs> <laughs> we had we had some wild calls today. It's like it was it was cool though. It's like we got it all sorted out, <laughs> you know. Yes, I love it. And and uh, for everybody, you know, we will talk to you next year. <laughs> yes, literally. <laughs> I love saying that. Remember, you know, what, back. Back in the old days when we were in school and when you left for the holidays, you'd say, see you next year. And everybody got such a kick exactly. out of that. Exactly. Yeah. That's I what I that. thought of. You know, I'll see you next year, you know, and I, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be off the air. The next time I'm on the air is the 8th. I know you have your show on the 2nd. So you're off for two weeks. I'm off for like three weeks. And uh, wow. yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back on with Dr. Rose on the 8th. She's off for three weeks, too, because she took yesterday off, and we had, uh, you know, the, the wonderful Charlotte Kornberg. We had a great show. 
so go glad. listen to it in archive. Yeah, if you missed it, I you got to go listen to archive. We had so much fun. Oh, my God. And then um, we'll be back on the night, you and I. Yeah. Awesome sauce. Can't wait. So thanks to all of our callers and everybody that made uh, it a great year on the radio, even if the rest of things weren't that great. But on the radio, it was great. (laughs) We had a great year. And we'll see you all next year. And thanks to you, Mary. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Bye, everyone. Thanks to you. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Mary Ellen.